Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. See, a lot of times we think, well, they didn't get anything. No, that word actually went into their heart. But it said the devil came, and he took that out of their heart. What did he do? He replaced it with a lie. He did the same thing he did to Eve. He took the word of God out of Eve's heart. And he put a lie there. That's the only way he can take the word of God out. Because otherwise, if he was replacing the word of God with truth, it would still be the word of God. But the devil is a liar, and he is the father of lies, and he was a liar from the beginning. So he comes and he replaces that. It says, out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. Before it had a chance to germinate. Before it had a chance to be watered. Before it had a chance to break forth into life. That word, that seed, that word of God fell into their hearts. That's what's happened in the church world today. We've got a, a, a field. And there's been a lot of word. There's been a lot of seed strode out there. But before they have a chance. Brother George used to say, I want to make a ball player out of him. Make a politician. Make a Hollywood star. Make a country singer. They on the rock are they. Which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. Still hanging around and intermingling the wrong crowd. Choked cares of this life we can get so caught up in doing nothing that we get choked by the cares of life bring no fruit to perfection but on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word kept it and bring forth fruit Patience. Bring forth fruit with patience. Go plant a garden. You go out there and you till that garden up. Get everything just right. You put the seed out there. You know, you water it. You get the weeds out of it. You know, you don't go out there and plant that garden and say, you know what, y'all come over next week, we're going to be picking corn. You know, it takes time. It grows. It goes through a season. You have to care for it. You have to take care of it. Like I say, you have to keep the weeds and the bugs and everything else. You have to keep the rabbits and the deers. Because everybody wants some of that crop. They'll eat it before the fruit gets there. Had to protect it. Jesus said with patience. This has come up. With patience. There's some other scriptures I'd like to bring in if I can find them. In Romans chapter 2.
Paul speaking here. Thou art inexcusable, old man. Think that thou, old man, judge them such things, do it the same. Or despise the riches of goodness, forbearance, long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Verse 5 But after thy hardness and infinite heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but they obey on righteousness, indignation, and wrath. He says right here, that those, God, that righteous judge and the dead judge, he's going to render judgment. And it's going to be according as we like that illustration I told you the other day about the sun. Talking about one to wrath and one to righteousness. We're talking about Pharaoh and the hardness of his heart. The sun comes out. It can't help that clay gets hard and the wax melts. The sun's just doing his job. And that's the way it is. And when God brings his judgment, what, what's it do? And it says, render to every man according to, to them who by patient continuance, patient continuance in well-doing, seek, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. In other words, if you're seeking after these things, the righteousness of Christ, he's going to reward you, and the reward I see here is that you're going to be rewarded with eternal life. What did he say over there in, in, in Luke? This here fell on good ground. And then with patience, they brought forth fruit. This is the patience of the saints. This is the patience of the saints. This is what's going to save us through tribulation, through trials, through heartaches, through this life and through this world. This is what's going to bring us salvation. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Just some small ones maybe you can make note of. Second Thessalonians 3 and 5. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. In Romans chapter 5 and not in verse 3 and not only so but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Something about this patience that God has given us. And if we go over to 2 Peter chapter 1. Maybe if you'd be patient and bear with me, we will get through this patient Bible lesson here. But I think there's there's little nuggets in these things that will help us to understand. Talk about the 
patient, waiting. I think about the saints. And we'll go on over into the book of Hebrews. And we'll get to some of these. I think of the patience of the saints. Those that waited. I heard Brother George speaking some of that there. Get a chance, maybe we can make some copies sometime. That there. Title just left me. <laughs> I'd coming in power, something about power. Speak some of these things.